As our sun declines, our need for safety and assistance increases. Choosing appropriate and quality care for an older adult often requires sifting through the good, the bad, and the ugly. Do you know which care option is right for your loved one? Do you recognize the signs of a quality in-home care provider? To ensure that your loved one will be safe, healthy, and happy, do you know what questions to ask of a prospective in-home care provider? Do scam artists target older adults? Hello, my name is attorney Ramsey Barawi, and welcome to Your Money, Your Life. Today, my guest is Nancy Coulter, president and CEO of Senior Options. She also created Starfish Resources, LLC, to educate the public on resources available to seniors. In addition, she authored a pathway to senior care in San Diego, in which she reveals the ins and outs of the industry. Nancy, welcome to Your Money in Your Life. It's great to have you on the program. Thank you. It's great to be here. A little bit about scams. Mm -hmm. Now, the, my understanding is the elderly are oftentimes victimized in scams. Can we talk about the kinds of scams that they're most likely to become victims of? Well, there are so many out there, unfortunately, and seniors are targeted. Um, they were raised to be more respectful and not to question as much as, as us younger kids have been. So they're, they are a little more gullible um, and, and vulnerable because of that. Some of the big ones that are out there is, um, oh, the internet lottery emails that come out. Um, sometimes they're even calling on the phone saying, you won the Irish lottery and all you have to do is give us $250 and that's the, the fines and the taxes and we're going to send you a million dollars. Well, anytime you have to pay to get money, don't do it. That's just, that's the big red flag right there. They're not going to ask you for that up front. If there's fines or taxes coming from a winning, they're going to take it out of the winning. Mm -hmm. um, one of the other things that's being done is they'll call you on the phone and they want to verify your information. And so they start asking you to tell them your social security number, your bank account number, different things of that nature. If they're calling you and they have that information, you don't need to be verifying it with them. Uh, just hang up. It, that's the best thing to do. We've had a door-to-door -door thing that's been going on where you have um, two people. One comes to the front door and knocks and tries to take up your time with conversation while the other one scoots around and comes in the back door and looks for a purse or things like that that might be easily snatched and run off with. That's not so much a scam, but it is something that's been happening with seniors. The grandma scam has been going on for quite a few years, and I actually know of somebody that almost um, got burned with this one. They call you in the middle of the night. Grandma, Grandma, it's me, your grandson, your favorite grandson, and I'm in a pickle. I need your help. Well, you've just woken up. You're a little foggy. It's the middle of the night. And most of us just automatically go, John? Yeah, Grandma, it's John. Well, what, what, what do you mean you're in a pickle? What's wrong? What's the matter? Oh, I did the stupid thing. I went up to Nova Scotia with some buddies, and I got robbed. And they've got my ID, they've got all my money, and I've got no way to get home. I need help. And please don't tell Mom, because if she knew I was here, she'd kill me. And so they try and get the person on the phone to wire money somewhere, anywhere. And once you wire, the money is gone. It is not traceable. It is, there's no way to get that money back. So if somebody asks you any time to wire money for any reason, unless you're really 150% sure of where that money is going and for why, you shouldn't do it. Um, there's, with, email now there's a lot of phishing scams trying to get your personal information mm -hmm. um, again if they're contacting you they should already have your information don't verify things don't give out your social security number do not give out your medicare number do not ever give out your bank account number even when you're paying a bill you shouldn't put the full account number on the check anymore just put the last four numbers from the account on the check that way, if somebody does go through your mail, which unfortunately has happened all too often lately, um, then they're not getting all of the information about the account. Absolutely. So you're protecting yourself that way. 
you know, a couple of scams that, that I'm familiar with, they, they're more in the nature of home improvement scams. Mm -hmm. uh, one of them is somebody will come to your house and say, I can do a job for so and so much, and, but I need a deposit of so and so much and I'll be back next week and you never ever see them again. Mm -hmm. They take the deposit, they're gone. Another one, which I've seen several times, a um, group of guys will come to your house and say, look, we saw your driveway, your driveway is in, in real disrepair, it really needs some work. You know, we can do this tomorrow and, we, and they give you a really low ball price. We can do it for so much, we've got four guys, Business is slow, we can do this tomorrow, but we need you to pay us so much today. And these guys are gypsies, they're gone. Mm -hmm. You never yeah. ever see them again. They're home improvement scams is what they are. Yeah. And they, they target the elderly. Mm -hmm. You can understand somebody wanting a deposit up front, so it's very easy to Absolutely. say, oh yes, all right, I understand, and, and pay it out. But anytime somebody is asking you to act right now, mm -hmm. or the deal's not gonna be active any longer, mm -hmm. say no. It's if a, it can't wait till tomorrow or the next day, then something's fishy. It's a real red flag. Yes. It is. Yeah. And you really want to have that time just like you would with a home care company, just like you would with anybody that you're bringing in to do work at your home. You want to vet them out. You want to find out if they've got a business license, right. if they are insured, if they've got any complaints against them. And there's so many different ways to find that information now. If it's too good to be true? Took the words right out of my mouth. Yeah. <laughs> If it's too good to be true, be careful. Mm -hmm. Be careful. I think that's a good place for us to stop. The number of Americans over age 65 is increasing dramatically. The effects of aging, such as reduced vision, decreased muscle strength, reduced mental processing, increased risk of falls, and reduced mobility is likely to affect each one of us in some way. As such, deciding where to live in our senior years is influenced by factors such as our health, family assistance, personal finances, and home modification. Scams abound at any age. However, older Americans are more vulnerable to financial exploitation. Be aware of telemarketing scams, identity theft, fake check scams, and home repair fraud. Take steps to minimize the risk of becoming a victim of any such scams. Also remember to educate yourself about resources available to seniors. A good place to start is by visiting and touring both the SeniorOptions.com and StarfishResources.net websites. Visiting these websites will make an appreciable difference. In closing, I'd like to thank my guest, Nancy Coulter, founder and CEO of Senior Options, creator of Starfish Resources LLC, and author of A Pathway to Seniors to Senior Care in San Diego for her participation on this program. Nancy, thank it's you. It's been a pleasure. Pleasure thank been you. all mine. And thank you to you, our viewers, for watching Your Money, Your Life. My name is Attorney Ramsey Barawi, Building a Trust.